Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the time value of money, specifically calculating compound interest. Make sure you have a calculator handy because you're going to need it. First, let's start with the definition of compound interest. Compound interest is interest earned on the principal plus interest. So if you invest $100 into a savings account and by the end of the first year you have $102, you would earn interest on the $102, not just the $100. If you're only earning interest on the principal, that's considered simple interest. Uh, unfortunately for us, compound interest is very frequently used by credit card companies when you owe money. So when you owe money, if you owe $15 and then you don't pay that $15 and then the next month you owe $16.70, you earn interest on that $16.70. So it just gets compounded further and further. Sa savings accounts generally use compound interest as well, so there is some positives here. Um, in this video, we're only going to look at compound interest when it's compounded annually. In the next video, we'll talk about when it's compounded more than once a year. So let's get started. Our first example, we're just going to compare simple interest to compound interest. So we're looking at a $1,000 deposit at 6% interest for four years. Now the simple interest, we can just use that simple interest formula where we can say, okay, the future value is the present value times one plus r times t, right? Because the only thing that we are interested on is that principal, uh, the principal or the present value. So that would give us our principal is 1,000 times one plus that interest rate. Make sure you convert it to a decimal, 0 0.06, right? We divide this by 100 and times time is four. Make sure we follow order of operations here. We multiply first, that would be 1,000 times one plus 0 0.24 this would be 1,000 times 1.24, which ultimately this account in four years would have $1,240. Now, to calculate compound interest, I'm actually gonna use simple interest because I'm gonna do it, break it down year by year. So I'm gonna apply the simple interest formula to calculate that compound interest. And the way that I'm gonna set this up is with a table. So the beginning balance is $1,000. That interest earned in the first year, so the interest earned, remember this is gonna be interest equals the present value times rate times time. So this would be 1,000 times 0 0.06 times one, and this would be $60. So by the end of the first year, there's $1,060 in the account. Now at the beginning of the second year, there's $1,060. To calculate the interest earned, remember this is compound, so I earn it on all of this money, not just that 1,000. We would do 1,060 times 0 0.06 times the one year, because we're only looking at this single year. When we do that, we end up with $63.60. So the ending balance will be the beginning balance plus the interest earned for that year. So it's gonna be 1,200, let's try this again, 1,100, sorry, $1,123.60. Okay, so the beginning balance of year three is gonna be $1,123.60. The interest earned will be on that whole total amount from the beginning of the year, times 0 0.06 times one, and the interest earned now is going to be $67.42. And of course, we are gonna to have to round these numbers, right? We're gonna to round to the pennies place or the hundredths place. And the end of year three, this account is going to have $1,191.02. Okay, in our fourth and final year, there's $1,191.02 to calculate the interest earned in that final year. We're gonna take that and multiply it by 0 0.06 times one, and we end up with the interest of $71.46. And the total at the end will be $1,262.48. So you can see the difference here, right? If we just use simple interest, we had $1,240. If we use compound interest, if it's compounded annually, this account would have $1,262.48, so $22.48 more, not too bad. Now, this was kind of laborious, right? We, if, what if it was 10 years? I don't wanna do this table all the way to 10 years. In fact, even doing it to four years was kind of annoying. Luckily, there is a formula that we can use. I just wanted to show how we could use simple interest to calculate compound interest, but let's talk about the shortcut. So the shortcut here, you'll notice that every time I was multiplying by 0 0.06, when we have that repeated multiplication, we use exponents, right? So in this formula for the compound interest, we're gonna have some exponents involved. Here it is. If the interest, this should be is, is compounded annually, then we can find the future value with the formula. Future value 
equals present value or principal, right? Sometimes it's called the principal, times 1 plus r raised to the power of t. Keep in mind we need to follow order of operations. So order of operations dictates to us that we're going to add first, then we're going to do this power. The last thing we do is multiply by that present value. So we have to keep that order in mind. If you don't do this in the correct order, bad things are going to happen. You're going to end up with a crazy interest or future value. So r is the interest rate and t is the number of years between the future value and present value. Let's look at some examples. Here are two examples. I encourage you to pause the video, try them for yourself, and see if we agree with our answers. Keep in mind the information that's given to you in these two examples. Okay, first let's talk about Malcolm. Malcolm invests $5,000. That indicates to us that we have a present value of $5,000 in an account that offers 4.7% interest compounded annually. So we have an interest rate of 4.7%. Very important that we convert this to its equivalent decimal by dividing by 100 or moving the decimal two places to the left, giving us 0 0.047. How much money is in Malcolm's account after four years? So we have a time of four years, round to the nearest cent. So when we do compound interest, we frequently end up with big decimals that repeat or you know something. We're gonna round to the nearest cent. Obviously your bank is not gonna give you a fraction of a penny. Okay, so this is compounded annually, so we're gonna use that new formula the future value equals the present value times 1 plus r to the t. So this will be future value equals 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.047 to the power of 4. Then we would have future value equals 5,000, 1.047 to the fourth. Again, make sure you do this first. When you do that, you should end up with some crazy decimal, multiplying it by 5,000, and we end up with $6,008.37, right? And that, that, that was me rounding it. And depending on where you round it, so I tend to be a perfectionist where I keep everything exact. So as soon as I do 1.047 to the fourth in my calculator, I leave that in my calculator. I don't change it, I don't, I don't round it uh, then. If you did round it, you would end up with 1.202 or some, you know, something along those lines. Your amount will be slightly different. So in these cases, there is going to be some error depending on if you round somewhere in the problem versus if you don't. And that's okay. Hopefully your instructor is, you know, if you did end up rounding it and you got a slightly different amount, they should be okay with that too. But this is what I got when I kept it exact. All right, what about Janique? Janique has $15,672 in a savings bond. She opened the account seven years ago, put money into the account, then never deposited more money. And we're gonna assume she didn't take anything out either. If the interest rate was 2.8% compounded annually, how much money did she originally deposit into this account? Rounds the nearest dollar. Okay, so in this case, this represents the future value. So we have a future value of $15,672. She opened the account seven years ago, so we have time is seven and the interest rate on this account was 2.8%, which we want to convert to its equivalent decimal, 0 0.028. What we're missing here is our present value. That's what we're trying to figure out. So let's plug into the formula. We have future value equals present value times 1 plus r to the t. This would be 15,672. Is that unknown present value times 1 plus 0 0.028 raised to the power of seven. Following order of operations, this is gonna stay the same for now. We would add this, that's gonna be 1.028. And then when we raise that to the seventh power, we get approximately 1.213. Now, again, as I mentioned, I'm a perfectionist. I like keeping things exact until I don't have to. Now, what we have to do to get present value by itself is divide by this amount. So it's, hmm, how can we keep that exact if we have to divide by it. But what you can do in your calculator is it usually remembers the last answer. So once you have that value in your calculator, that long decimal, type in 15,672 divided by, and then you should be able to find somewhere an answer key. So mine is if I do second and then I hit the negative sign, you see ANS or I see ANS written above it, indicating that's the previous answer. That's gonna keep it exact. Now again, if you just use the 1.213, that's fine. It turns out that it's actually off by $3, but again, your instructor should tell you what to do, whether they want you to round in the middle of the problem or at the end of the problem, or if it doesn't matter and they're gonna give you credit either way because the $3 really isn't that much of a difference. But anyway, in the end, I figure out that the present value for Janique is $12,917.
and that's rounding to the nearest dollar, right? Because that's what it says, nearest dollar. So this is what I get for my present value. I think if you use the approximation of 1.213, you get about $12,920. So again, it's off by about $3, but shouldn't matter. All right, these have been examples of looking at compound interest when it's compounded annually. Thank you for stopping by.